So a big thank you to everyone that's been getting in touch with us uh, through the website or on the phones or on emails, just asking us questions about the teak uh, that we have here. Um, so this is a bit of a video really, just to explain the teak um, and also how it compares to Iroco. So I, you could say this is a video about teak versus Iroco. Teak traditionally, and over the last hundred years, um, has been known from um, coming from Burma or Indonesia. Um, and these were trees that have been growing for hundreds of years. And the, um, the, the trunks of the trees were enormous, very wide, um, huge, wide logs. Um, so when we talk in terms of the old kind of teak, um, we're talking in terms of those huge, wide pieces um, and incredibly long as well, with the, um, really wide pieces of heartwood. Um, however, the teak that you get nowadays, because of the sustainability issue, um, they were, it was overforested in Burma. So the way that you do teak nowadays um, is you get it from plantation. The only way to get sustainable teak um, that um, you know, uh, supports good environmental practices is to get it from um, plantations in places such as Ghana. So that's where our teak comes from. We get it from sustainable plantations in Ghana. The teak has always been traditionally used for boat building and it's the number one choice uh, for using for any um, marine construction like boats um, and specifically um, decking that you'd see on luxury yachts um, and, and that kind of thing. But also it's used for furniture, uh, outdoor furniture specifically because of its resilience to the weathering um, and also um, for bathrooms uh, and for kitchens as well where you've got that high level of water potentially, um, you know, going to be saturated by a lot of water through its life so it has that resilience to it so that is particularly um, you know the, the thing of choice that you use for tea. So I spoke a bit about Burma tea um, and the stuff from Indonesia which is um, you know uh, been become obsolete because of the foresting issues um, that kind of stuff was incredibly wide with the plantation grown teak it's a completely different story. So in terms of sizes, you can imagine a lot smaller because these are much younger logs because it's a younger program. Um, the plantation programs are much younger. So we're looking at like 12 year, 15 year trees as opposed to the 100 year trees. Um, so that makes things a lot narrower. So you can usually uh, achieve around about a 300 millimeter wide, maybe 400 millimeter wide board with its sapwood and its wany edge. But really the heartwood you should really only achieve at most probably about 200 millimeters in width um, but uh, a kind of a realistic amount is around the 150 millimeters in width um, for the heartwood. In terms of length um, a lot of it has been shipped over in containers and it actually gets forklift trucked into a container sideways so you can be looking at around about 2.3 meters in length um, and then thickness we do an inch and we do two inch um, so that just gives you a bit of an idea of the kind of sizes. So a, a typical board could be um, 25 millimetres thick by 150 millimetres wide by 2.3 metres long um, as a sawn wany edge product. If those sizes for the plantation teak don't work for your projects, whether it's a boat project or a, an outdoor furniture project, if those sizes aren't quite right um, because they're too small, um, then what we're quite often saying to our customers is you may need to look at Iroco. So Iroco is regarded nowadays, I suppose, as a bit of a poor man's teak, um, but only purely from the cost point of view. Um, because in terms of performance, it's a fantastically, um, you know, good alternative to teak. Um, it's a similar colouring. Um, it's certainly got a similar kind of resilience to water. Um, it's used for um, decking, pergolas and cladding, as well as boat building. Um, and it's that oil content that's similar to teak um, that essentially gives Iroco its, um, you know, its reputation as being a very, very good plan B and backup option to teak. Also, those sizes, it's a West African um, hardwood and the trees are very wide and very tall and they've been grown for um, a number of decades. In which case, that is where you can get those much bigger sizes. So with Iroco, um, it's um, one of our typical hardwoods and it comes in a, a variety of different sizes. So thicknesses, like a lot of our other hardwoods, you will start with an inch. Um, so say 25 millimeters. Then you've got 
inch and a quarter, inch and a half, two inch. So 32, 38, 50. And then you also get um, 65 mil in, in thickness and you can go right the way up to 100 mil in thickness. So for things like pergolas, you've got the beams there that you can work with. Um, in terms of widths, um, these are very wide trees. So you can get anything up to around about 400 millimeters in width. I think I've even seen boards in the yard that have been up to about 500 mil in width, which is huge. Um, and that's quite regular. We get packs that are random widths. Lengthwise, I've seen inch boards up to about 5.7 meters in length, but six meters it, it can be achieved. Um, the regular packs we get in here are about 4.5 or 4.2 mm, um, meters in length. Let's get into the, the look of the timber now so you can get a bit of an idea of um, what both timbers look like and also how comparably similar they are. So first off, we'll go with teak. I mean, this is a, a pretty good example of the kind of the curious, weird and wonderful look that you can get with the kind of plantation. Uh, teak sort of shapes and sizes um, and this has been planed to the face but it still has its still has its wany edge on it and it's sapwood which is very intriguing very characterful and that's just a narrow board really which um, isn't achieving quite that kind of width here you can see you're getting a bit more in the width as a heartwood so when we say heartwood we're talking about um, this area here the, the darker honey colored stuff and then this is the sapwood and the wany edge on the sides there. Uh, planed all round, um, this is the kind of thing that you're going to get with planing the plantation teak. You can see that lovely colouring um, and that honey colour is kind of very indicative of what you'd see um, with the um, with boat decks but bear in mind with the plantation stuff you are getting quite a bit of the character um, and some of the sapwood as well as you can see on this in this banding here. Iroko, so I'm going to come this side so as a sawn board this is what you can expect the iroco to look like um, but i mean just flipping this round you can kind of see when this is a plain face you get in that kind of difference in coloring um, and the coloring on iroco we say it's usually a straw yellow kind of color right the way through to a chocolate brown you can kind of see here this may even be the same pack but this is the more straw yellow kind of coloring and this is the more sort of chocolate brown coloring but you can see these this patterning, this striping, um, so not too dissimilar to the teak. So in terms of durability, both products very credible for use with any kind of um, marine construction or any um, any outdoor furniture or anything like that. Um, both very durable, very oily, and I think that's what gives it its signature durability against the elements. Um, but I, you know, I think we welcome people to get in touch with us and tell us a bit about their experiences with the two products because I have had a lot of customers say to me that they feel that teak is a bit softer uh, and Iroco can sometimes be quite hard and maybe therefore a little bit more brittle than the teak. Teak sometimes a little bit easier to work with. Um, Iroco possibly a little bit more of a carcinogenic dust. Um, but either way, both of those, like I say, are very credible products um, for, for use with um, with boat building um, and they are very durable products to use outdoors.